while GG4 and V10 are notorious for its boot loop case. In this video, we will show you how to fix boot loop and prevent it to happen again. The cause of boot loop is due to overheating which causes bad solder between the CPU chip and board. Before we begin, I need to tell you in the beginning that these tips require to tear down your phone. But it is pretty easy. And secondly, do this on your own risk. These tips can be applied to LG V10 and also G4. But in this video, I only show you on LG V10. To tear down LG V10 is really easy, but of course, it will void the warranty. First, we open the case and all the screws. After that, we open the engine cover. While prying, be careful not to pry it too deeply because it can damage the engine. After that, we disconnect the audio jack connector. Then, disconnect the screen ribbon. After that, we lift the motherboard. Again, be careful not to pry too deep inside which can damage the components. Take your time and do it carefully. This is the front camera. We need to lift a little before lifting the motherboard. This is the motherboard. This is a heat pad to transfer heat from CPU to phone frame. After that, we need to open the CPU and eMMC protective plate. We use tweezer to open it. If your phone hasn't boot looping and you only want to prevent your phone from overheat, you need to buy a copper plate and a thermal tape. But if you already experienced boot loop and want to try to revive it, then you can buy copper plate later, after you successfully revive the phone first. I use copper plate that about 0.2mm. I will mount this copper plate on top of CPU and eMMC using thermal tape. This is not an ordinary double-sided tape, but this is an electrical tape that can conduct heat really well. We cut the copper plate as wide as eMMC and CPU, and then we put it on top of it. You can skip this step if you don't have it yet. Actually, I made a mistake. I should do this step later. But because I already stick the copper plate, so I don't want to remove it again. To fix boot loop issue, we need to hit the CPU and also eMMC using heat gun. If you don't have a heat gun, then you can use a hair dryer. But we must create a cone-shaped thick paper at the end of a hair dryer to make the hot air focus on CPU only. If you use a hair dryer, set at highest temperature, then heat on the CPU for about 1 minute. Then we push the CPU using a wooden pencil or something like that. Don't touch the CPU using your finger, it might burn your skin. Repeat this step 3 or 4 times. If you use a heat gun, set it at lowest temperature, then heat the CPU. Until you think it's hot enough, push the CPU gently using wooden stick or pencil. Repeat 2 or 3 times. We do this to soften the solder, and then we press the CPU in hopes to fix the CPU connection to the board. Of course, if you haven't experienced boot loop, then you don't have to heat the CPU. After that, we close the CPU plate, but I will put a tape in this part to avoid short circuit. To close it, put the plate on its clamp. I will add more tape in here just for precaution. The reason is, we will put additional copper plate and we don't want this open part to be short circuited. I will design the copper plate to be look like a heat sink. After that, I put a copper plate again that is wide enough on top of the CPU. The purpose is to distribute heat coming from CPU to a wider area, hence make it cooler. Copper plates are usually used to spread the heat because it has good heat conductivity. This method is commonly used on mobile phones. For example, we can see on the Razer phone teardown. After that, I will add more copper at the top side so the heat will spread even more. After that, we put back the motherboard into the frame and just do the reverse process. We plug the screen connector. After that, we put back the headphone jack. 
we close the engine cover then just screw it back. If you don't have a hair dryer nor the copper plate, you can try to do this. Use an electrical tape, then put it on top of the CPU and EMMC several layers of it until it thick enough, then force close the engine cover. The idea is to press or to force the CPU and EMMC to touch the board. We hope by doing this, the loose connection due to bad solder can be fixed by putting pressure on the CPU. It is just temporary fix. If using electrical tape is work for you, then after that I suggest you to replace it using copper plate because using electrical tape will only cause the CPU hotter. Let's put back the battery and try to turn it on. This phone is actually already turned on, but it seems the brightness is too low. Apparently, there is a faulty on the light sensor, but at least the phone already turned on again. If it's not work for you, you can try to reheat the CPU. Some people say they can fix their phone after 2 or 3 times tries. So I was stirred down the phone again to fix the light sensors, and it turned out that I just not properly closed the engine cover. Now the question is, is the copper plate really can prevent overheating? Frankly, it's not much different, but it is cooler about 2 until 3 degrees Celsius. Plus, when the phone is getting hot and I close all ongoing apps and leave it on standby mode, the temperature drops quicker. We can use either 64 or CPU-Z to know the phone's temperature. This is current phone temperature. The room temperature is quite hot today which is 33 degrees Celsius. Now we will do a stress test using Antutu Benchmark to see system stability. Stress test will force the processor to work at maximum load for 15 minutes. After that, we will see how hot is the phone. Before I install the heatsink, the highest temperature indicated by the sensors can reach up to 70 degrees Celsius. But now we can see that maximum temperature is only 67 degrees Celsius and it is dropping rapidly when the phone idle, while the battery temperature is remain same. Now let's look at system stability using Antutu. Here you can see the phone work normal even though the processor is pushed to work at its maximum load. For LG V10 and G4 users, I recommend to install a CPU temperature monitor app. For example, like CPU Float. This app is so small and not burden the system. With this application, you can always monitor CPU temp. If your processor frequently reads more than 65 degrees, then I suggest you to install heatsink made by copper plate as in this video. However, if you live in cold country and the CPU is stable less than 60 degrees, then you don't have to install the heatsink. Your phone will be fine as long as it's not overheating. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video can be useful for you.